Oh, goodness, I come from a large Irish Catholic family. I mean a lot of people. <laughs> woo -woo, another person just sat in something wet. Cool. No, my dad was a disciplinarian of that family. What he said was law. Being disciplined by him was a fate worse than death. I remember one day I carved my name in the coffee table with an ink pen. Oh, my mom looked at me and just went south. All right, you little fat boy. <laughs> Wait till your father gets home. You're going to get a proper ass whooping now. Wait till your father gets home. You're going to get a shellacking like you wouldn't even believe. And I'm like, Dad, Dad's going to punish me? Oh, my God. I might as well lay down now. I'm a little eight-year-old Irish dead kid. I might as well just lay down because I'm dead. I'm Irish dead. Find my happy place. <laughs> Find my happy place. <laughs> so my dad gets home. My hero, right, walks through the front door, and I run up to him with all the love in my heart, and I look at him, and I go, Dad. And he looks down at me and goes, don't call me that in public. And mom tells him what happens, and I'm afraid here comes the butt whooping. You know, we sit, and he comes out of the kitchen, just looks at me. And then he has that thing, sounds like a bowl, he's like, what the, what, could you spell that, Dad? <laughs> no, apparently not. Okay, thank you. <laughs> but he looks at me and goes, <sighs> eats dinner the whole time he's eating. <sighs> just staring at me. I'm thinking, man, I'm just going to die. I'm just going to die. Dinner's done. We're watching TV. Just every five seconds, commercial. <sighs> I get up and go to the bathroom. I come out of the bathroom. He's standing in front of the door. <sighs> I just know I'm going to get my butt whipped before I go to bed. Bedtime comes, I kiss mom on the cheek, kiss dad on the cheek. I go to bed, I'm laying there, it dawns on me. I got Scott clean away with it. <laughs> One hour, two hours, three hours goes by, I'm so happy, I'm dancing on the bed. <laughs> I call my name in the coffee table, I call my name in the coffee table. I, <laughs> I woke up the next morning, my picture was on the back of the milk carton. <laughs> Daddy, no. <laughs> Find my happy place. <laughs> Find my happy place. Dad wasn't all bad. He taught me how to, well, he taught me how to drink when I was eight. <laughs> Thank you, eight years old drinking. Good for, good for you laughing at that. Don't we put the fun and dysfunctional over there. <laughs> now I'm eight years old and he sat me down on his knee and he goes, Sean, when you're 21 and you're in a bar, always order your beer in a bottle of oil. Never order it in a can. Why is that, Daddy? That hurt worse than a can. <laughs> <laughs> Find my happy place! Find my happy place! <laughs> oh, oh, goodness. He used to get drunk and philosophize. Oh, goodness, he could, he could preach up a storm. He could just philosophize. He would tell you how the world works and everything. I remember eight years old sitting on his lap and he goes, it's always the darkest just before the dawn. So if you're gonna steal your neighbor's paper, that's the time to do it. <laughs> if at first you don't succeed, I don't skydive. <laughs> That's no, no, no. Oh, goodness. Taught me how to swim, too. One of those macho guys throws you in a lake, says sink or swim. Oh, my God. Took me 15 minutes to get out of that gunny sack. <laughs> what? Well, the rocks kept pulling me down. <laughs> and then when you get free, it's hard to swim when kittens are hanging onto your ankles. It's just. Oh, who said, oh. These are jokes. <laughs> Here are some more now. <laughs> Stay with me on these, okay? It's, it's very important. <laughs> oh, goodness. How you folks doing, man? Y'all doing good? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Only reason I did that is because I wanted to take a drink. <laughs> no, I care about you, our audience. So uh, mothers, put your hands together. Oh, this is for you gals. Yeah. I know one mother that's here. My ex-mother-in-law my ex is here. <laughs> and I swear to God I put the check in the mail. But I'm serious. She is, she's really here. So is my ex-father-in-law. God bless him. Um, oh, my God, mothers. You can get anything you want out of your mother if you annoy them. But you have to be good about annoying them. You have to annoy them long and hard till they snap. 
and then they're going to give in, but there's always conditions. I remember the thing that my mom hated most was I was able to imitate the cartoons that I watched on Saturday. She hated that. Didn't like cartoons, didn't have thought I had a better life ahead of me than imitating cartoons. Got in my head, I wanted a dog. So every day, exactly at 2 o'clock, when she's cleaning up from lunch, trying to get ready for dinner, I walk up to her and I go, Mom, can I have a dog? <laughs> I'm tugging on her apron. Well, Zivu, just a little tiny puppy. <laughs> and then you got to do the bend over backwards. Mom, can I have a dog? <laughs> Don't laugh, because it didn't work. <laughs> I had to break out the big guns. Every day, exactly at 2 o'clock, she's cleaning up from lunch, getting ready for dinner. I looked her right in her eye, and I said, a pet. Oh, she come unglued. All right, you little fat pugger, you can have your dog. You can have your dog, but I'm not taking care of it, not when I order your feet and that dog every day. Promise me, boy -o. I promised her. So after three months of just, oh my God, the prettiest little Irish setter, starving. <laughs> she has this little emaciated dog in her hand and she kicks in my bedroom door. <laughs> How many times, young man, do you think this dog would have died if I hadn't fed it? Well, once, Ma. <laughs> Where'd you go to school? Ow! <laughs> Not with the dog! <laughs>